Ghent University Hospital is one of the biggest hospitals in the northern part of Belgium. The liver unit goes for inpatient care, for example, for patients with disturbed liver function parameters to severe inpatients hospitalized in intensive care and needing, for example, liver transplantations. On an annual basis, we perform 50 liver transplantations. Glycomics is a study of sugar structure on the proteins of a patient. Glycomics is made by liver cells and made by B lymphocytes. Since we are studying liver disease and inflammation, it makes sense to look at glycomics to see what happens in liver and what is related to liver-associated inflammation. In 2002, we met with the people of VIB and we performed a pilot study to look if glycomics were changed in patients with hepatitis C according to the degree of fibrosis. VIB is a 1,500-person research organization, including medical biotechnology, which is what our department does. We have uh, discovered the first biomarkers based on glycomics in 2004, a collaboration we've had with Professor Van Vleerberger for uh, close to 20 years now, and has been instrumental in um, catalyzing this research. In the early 2000s, we basically had no methods to um, look at glycomic profiles. And initially we were using DNA sequencers. We've actually worked towards developing this chemistry to become so simple that it can be run in routine clinical laboratories. At this stage, we can diagnose the progression of um, um, liver fibrosis. We can diagnose early stage liver cirrhosis. What we are doing right now is to study whether other information might still be present in this serum glycoma, as we call it. What we have seen recently is that um, there is information there to distinguish patients with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease who have or who have not yet developed NASH. The challenge in the field of nephildine is to find an ideal biomarker that can make the difference between steatosis and steatohepatitis without the need to perform an invasive liver biopsy. Glycomics can help because specific glycosylation profiles can recognize liver inflammation and liver inflammation is the main trigger to develop steatohepatitis. This test is validated in a multicenter Belgian cohort of 300 obese patients and also in a pediatric population. And the test showed that we are able to recognize steatohepatitis among NEFLD patients with a very high accuracy. With the increasing prevalence of NASH, we believe that especially the de detection of inflammation in this disease in the liver will become very important. This is exactly what this test can do. So we're um, now expanding into large-scale multicenter trials to validate this uh, particular finding. Apart from the diagnostic possibilities of glycomics, we also assess the prognostic capacities of this glycomic test. In patients having cirrhosis, an initially glycomic assessment could divide those patients eventually developing a liver cancer versus those not. The main risk factor for the development of hepatocellular carcinoma is the presence of cirrhosis. We are in need of new clinical markers that can help us to stratify patients with cirrhosis. We have performed a study together with our colleagues from Hôpital Beaujon in Clichy in France, where we have defined the glycomic serum protein profile um, in patients with compensated cirrhosis. We have seen that patients who were above the cutoff that we defined had a hazard ratio of 12 to develop HCC compared to those who were below the cutoff. And this after seven years of follow-up. If we can provide patients with a personalized screening regimen, we are convinced that adherence will be better and that we will have, in the end, better results, more early diagnosis of hepatocellular carcinoma and a better survival for the patients. In liver transplantation, unfortunately, a small percentage of transplants will fail almost immediately in, uh, in the recipient. And so what we found, again, in collaboration with uh, Professor Van Vlierberg, is that we profile the storage liquids in which the organs are being transported. We could actually detect very reliably which livers were going to fail or not. Since the quality of organs is getting less, it is very vital that we find a way to measure whether an organ is going to function or if it is going to fail. The hope that we have is that with glycomics we will be able to predict whether an organ is going to work 
and that we can do that even for these very marginal organs, which at this moment we would probably not dare to transplant. The only problem at this point still is that the test takes too long. This is now triggering us in the basic research laboratory to overcome these remaining clinical chemistry challenges so that we can speed up this test and we're making very good progress. There are several possibilities to have impact on patients. On a non-invasive manner we can diagnose inflammation and degree of liver fibrosis and cirrhosis can in a very nice way assess the risk patients have for developing a hepatocellular carcinoma after the assessment of cirrhosis and we can avoid unnecessary liver transplants in patients needing a liver transplantation. We are working at this moment in speeding up this test so that it can really brought to the transplant community.